Who wins this series, my friend? Golden State's going to win this series. The question is going to be how much resistance is Houston going to offer them. That's really what it comes down to for me. Bottom line is this. Golden State's a better offensive team. Golden State is a significantly better defensive team. Yeah. Houston can turn it up at times defensively, but they're not consistent across the board. And at the critical positions that you need to, need to going to be good defensively in this series, they don't have that without Patrick Beverly. That's an enormous loss to play a team like this because you got Jason Terry and Pablo Prigioni trying to chase Steph Curry around. James Harden is going to have to be chasing Klay Thompson around. We know James is not necessarily the guy that's going right. to dig in on that end. So that's the biggest problem is, is can Houston stop Golden State or make them less efficient at least to give yourself a chance? to I, mean, I think Houston can score in this series. I don't know that they're going to be able to stop Golden State for long stretches, and that's what it comes down to. Golden and State's better on both ends. Just for our viewers, uh, Beverly, wrist injury, not expected to play Correct. for the rest of the season. So yeah. that's why you really think that's a super negative. That's an enormous loss. You're talking one of the best on-the-ball defensive guards in the league. He's the, And he's also the kind of guy that's an irritant. He would wear on Curry a little bit over the course of a series with the stuff that he does and maybe get into his head a little bit, make him try to do too much. That's what Patrick Beverly does to guys. Without him, it's really difficult to think. They're on the ball perimeter defense. It's going to be a problem. you got to chase guys around a lot of screens when you play the Golden State Warriors and commit for, for the entire shot clock. I don't know that Houston really has that level. They'll score, but they're not going to score enough because they're not going to stop Golden State the level they have so to. So you're going Golden State in? I'm going to be nice and say six. Oh. If I wanted to really be out there on the edge, I'd say sweep because I think Golden State's a significantly better team. But listen, Houston does have a lot of momentum based on what they just did to the Clippers. That, that does mean something heading into this series. So I will say Houston, because of that, they're playing good enough basketball right now, believe in themselves. They'll get two games, but Golden State wins it in six. I picked the Golden State Warriors in six as well. Um, I look at the I look at the Warriors. They move the basketball very well. They trust one another and Klay Thompson and Steph Curry aren't their only shooters. Draymond Green can hit some shots. Andre Iguodala won't hit some shots, but he'll score on the break for you. Harrison Barnes can hit some shots. He can score getting to the basket. Sean Livingston can come off the bench. He causes you matchup problems. And again, the absence of Patrick Beverly, as Tim just elocuted, is devastating because he is there specifically to defend. Yeah. He ain't an offensive player. He's there to defend. And when you have Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, you got a problem. Because whoever's on James Harden, whoever James Harden is on, they're going to make him run. They're going to make him run. That's how they're going to try to offset what he gives them offensively. Because when he's on defense, they're going to make him move. They're not going to allow him to stand around. And the thing about it is, is that to me, Tim, Dwight Howard, more so than in any other series since he has been in Houston, this is the series where it's, you hate to call an $88 million man the X Factor, but he's the X Factor. <laughs> because you have Andrew, uh, Andrew Bogut and David Lee down on Maurice Spates is out. There is Although he might. He might come back. He might come back. But he, they're not sure. Yeah. My point to you is that it don't matter. Dwight Howard has to dominate. 100%. He has Completely to dominate. Agree. Because if he doesn't dominate, then you got Houston's perimeter game against Golden State's perimeter game. And that ain't no matchup. Irregardless of how great Harden is, he's outnumbered. Because these guys, as good as the Corey Brewers and the Josh Smiths and them can be in moments, you have to consistently play 48 minutes of defense running around to keep keep up with these guys this is what they do to you and to me houston is not gonna do it forget about can't they won't even try they're going to get lackadaisical you've got to make it up on the offensive end of the floor with dwight howard dominating the paint area yep. on both ends defensively and offensively he's got to do it mm. i'm going out on that edge that you talked about <laughs> i'm going sweep Golden State is a 10-point favorite at home tonight. Unusual for a conference final game one. 10 points. These teams played four times all before January 21st, or the last game was on the 21st. Golden State won by an average of 15 points a game. I know they were a long time ago, and it'd be very hard for, as you well know, for a team to win eight straight games in one year, one season against one team. But Dwight Howard played in the third and the fourth game. In those two games, he had zero block shots, which I don't understand. And in the last game, 
a, a blowout by Golden State at Golden State. He had seven points and 11 rebounds. So I, I don't know he's, that he's going to be as huge a factor as you guys say he, he needs to be. And in the end, this is the number one defensive team in pro basketball. And they still, thank, thank you for bringing it up, but they still don't get enough credit for this. They do a number on teams. And I still think that the real Rockets were the team that got blown out three times in those first three games against the Clippers. Remember, it was like, I'm off yes. the top of my head, 16 yeah, points, 25 points, and 33 points. They can't run with these boys. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just not it's not a fair fight, and I also think Houston might be a little mentally and physically weary from the seven games, especially tonight. I think even more than being weary, the biggest concern is when you're locked in a seven-game series, they haven't talked about anything other than the Clippers for two weeks. Yeah, that's true. You have one day off. Playing a team like Golden State requires an awful lot of film preparation to understand how good your rotations have to be defensively because of the way they move it and how many guys can shoot it. Yeah. You don't have enough time to prepare. to prepare. Golden State had a couple extra days as it is, and they're already a better team. So if Houston wants to have any chance, obviously, they have to win one of these first two games. And I just don't think they've had enough time to get ready for what they're going to see because this is an onslaught when you play the Golden State. Well, the only thing I would say to that, Tim, is this, and I agree with you, obviously, but... I think that you will agree, and I try to tell Skip this, sometimes your potency defensively is because you're so lethal offensively. No doubt. Even when no doubt. it's a tie score, you feel like you're playing catch-up. It's like defending Steph Curry straight up. You know what makes him so lethal? You're petrified of him the second he steps past half court yep. because he has the green light to pull up from anywhere, and he can make those shots mm -hmm. with accuracy. And so because of that, you're constantly on your heels, and it affects you. That's why it's so important for Dwight Howard to show up, because you have to put Golden State on its heels defensively. you got to score. They need to be worried about you scoring, so they have to be more precise offensively. Because if you don't put that kind of pressure on them, and they're able to just go out there loosey-goosey because they ain't worried about you, you're dead. Yep. You're dead. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals up next. We're discussing that. Can you hang out or no? Absolutely. I'm here. Okay, good. Go. We're back in a moment with legs. Definitely. We think back to the quarterback class of 2012 that included Andrew Luck, RG3, Russell Wilson, Nick Foles, the first quarterback from the class of 2012 to re-sign with his team to sign a contract extension is Ryan Tannehill, the quarterback who Joe Philbin called out last season, publicly challenged with his job, and yet Tannehill finished the season strong, strong enough for the Miami Dolphins to want to do an extension with him through the 2020 season. That tax on all these years to a quarterback that they drafted in that trumpeted class of 2012, and he gets the extension before Andrew Luck, before RG3, before Russell Wilson, before Nick Foles, or the quarterbacks in that class, Take a back seat right now to Ryan Tannehill and the new extension that he has just signed with the Miami Dolphins. Now, according to Adam Schefter, it's a six-year deal worth $96 million, 45 of that guarantee. Tannehill had previously been under contract through the 2016 season after the Dolphins picked up his fifth-year option this offseason. Tannehill coming off a career season where he threw for over 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns. Uh, had a good QBR in 2014. Tannehill, who was drafted eighth overall in 2012, again, as Adam Schefter mentioned, is the first of his quarterback class to get a uh, renewal. Andrew Luck, RG3, Russell Wilson, Nick Foles. So let's talk about this, Skip Bayless. Moving forward with one Ryan Tannehill, good yep. move or a bad move for the Dolphins? I wouldn't have done it. You know how I feel, Stephen. I said uh, on the record before that draft, I don't love this guy, and I still don't love him. At least the Dolphins didn't bet their entire ranch. At least they didn't go Flacco Romo with the guaranteed money because now Ryan Tannehill's guaranteed portion is tied for 11th among quarterbacks with uh, Alex Smith. So, so again, maybe they sort of mitigated this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ryan Tannehill is a quarterback who will always be not bad, but not great. Ryan Tannehill is is your basic damned if you do damned if you don't kind of quarterback difficult to find someone a whole lot better than him because they they don't grow on trees yet he's not the guy who will ultimately take you to the promised land and as Kerry just pointed out Joe Philbin got to a breaking point last year where it looked like he was ready to pull the plug on Ryan Tannehill 
I don't know exactly what changed. I don't know if the end of the year changed that because he did come on. Had a pretty good year last year. 27 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions. He was fifth in, um, in overall accuracy and completion percentage. Not bad. But again, the team went 8-8 eight and eight, as it went 8-8 eight and eight the year before that and went 7-9 and nine with Ryan Tannehill the year before that. He is durable. He is sturdy. He will always be there. He hasn't missed a start for you. Is he that guy? Is he going to take you over the hump and finally into the playoffs and deep into the playoffs? I'm going to give that a big no. Now, they have completely changed their receiver core. So next year is a huge year for Ryan Tannehill. They wiped it out and started over. Jordan Cameron, my little guy Kenny Stills from University of Oklahoma, who was I like Kenny. I, I do too. And we'll see how he does there. Greg Jennings, our old friend from the show here. That's right. I'm not sure what Greg's got left, but maybe he's got something left. I spoke to him. He feels he's got a lot left. Okay. And then they drafted with the 14th overall out of Louisville, Devontae Parker, who looks like he's pretty good to me. So you've got some weapons, which brings us back to his big deficiency over the last two years. He was the third lowest in completion percentage on deep throws, 20-plus yards. Only worse with Derek Carr and Cam Newton. And last year, he had only one touchdown of 20 yards or more. So he hasn't thrown the deep ball well, but could that go back to Mike Wallace and sure. their lack of chemistry or rapport? Maybe so. Maybe Mike Wallace was just not happy there. Well, for whatever reason, they couldn't literally connect. So, again, you give him a shot next year, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with what I said before the draft. Ultimately... Dolphin fans will be frustrated long term with Ryan Tannehill. If you're saying he's good but not great, I can live with that. If you're saying he didn't, I'll go this, decent but not great. If you're great. saying that yeah. he didn't deserve this money, I respectfully mm. disagree. Mm. This is Jay Cutler caliber money, maybe a little less. Not not Jay, the, uh, the uh, guarantee. The four, it was yeah. 45, yeah. 45 million more, or 45 million in guaranteed dollars. I'm looking at a guy like Kaepernick, for example, 61 million in guaranteed money. You know, I'm looking at some of these guys, and it's not like he's getting paid what they're getting paid. He's a respectable quarterback with the potential to be really good. I think that when you think about cohesiveness, when you think about the fact that quarterbacks don't grow on trees, yep. when we've recognized how difficult it is to find somebody to put behind center and pencil in there every Sunday afternoon, I think he deserves the money. You know, he's been in the league for three years, Skip, seven and nine, and two back-to-back -back eight and eight seasons in the AFC East. By the way, let's also look at the fact that, again, you didn't have much of a running game as far as I'm concerned. Mike Wallace was your primary yeah. receiver. We know how that was working out. Joe Philbin was your coach. And by the way, maybe they made a decision to pick Tannehill over Joe Philbin. Maybe. Because they got some question marks about Philbin. That's highly Got questionables about, questions about everybody else. Yeah. So when I look at it from that perspective, um, I, I told you I've always liked Tannehill, and I, I, I think he deserves the benefit of the doubt, and I'd give him a chance. In today's game, it's very, very difficult to find a decent quarterback, as New York Jets fans can tell you over and over and over yep. again. And Buffalo so, Bills and fans. And Buffalo Bills fans yep. and all of that stuff. Yep. So when I look at it from that perspective, you take a chance on this guy. $45 million compared to what other quarterbacks are getting. Skip, I have no problem with it. And by the way, Yes, he might, have done, he might have had that low percentage on deep throws, but overall, he completed 66% of his passes. Yep. Overall, his QBR was 59. It ain't yeah. great. Okay. It that ain't was great. his best of the three. That was his best of the three. Well, it was, his, it was his latest. That's not bad. It was bad. his latest. A 66% yeah. completion a and a 4,000-yard passing mm -hmm. season is not bad. They're going in the right direction. Can you go win the Super Bowl with Ryan? Well, no, Daniel? no, but you're not paying a guy $45 million to win. Russell Wilson is going to get mega, mega dollars, okay? Well, you know what? Andrew Luck is going to get it, too. They ain't win the Super Bowl either. All I'm saying to you is that it's not about when you want to win a Super Bowl, yeah. but in the end, you want somebody that can hold down the fort. Right. And to get, do at least a respectable job and won't help you beat yourself. Mm -hmm. Ryan Tannehill does at least that. I would have given him the, I would have given him the money. 45 guaranteed. That's not 77 much. million in new money. That's not much. Unless you wake up three years from now and you're mired in mediocrity. Well, eight again, eight, that, eight, could eight, be, eight, that could be, that could be, that could be the case. What quarterbacks yeah. you could have had. Who could they get? What's available? All right, ladies and gentlemen, as the Stephen A. alluded to, uh, Russell Wilson obviously going through contract negotiations now. He's expected to have a huge payday. They say that Seahawks they offered him $80 million over four years. Not enough. They went back to the table. The man made over $600,000 last season. Paid. He mm -hmm. needs to get paid. Give Russell Wilson his money. I agree. Even though he did throw that interception.
He it was a good throw. Worst call in Super Bowl play. history by Pete Carroll. Break on the ball. Oh. Yeah, he should have audible. Butler. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Tonight, some NBA teams hope to cash in. Magic Johnson. Well, he has his money on the Lakers. Let's listen. Laker fans wear your Laker gear all day today to bring good luck to the ping pong ball so we can get the number one pick. All right, so I'm starting early, 4.30 in the morning. See you in a minute. Eat, uh, West Coast time. That was the Why he sounded like Barry White? Yeah, because it's, it's early. Just you just got out of the bed. Come on, come on, come on, girl. Come here, baby. Who wins this series, my friend? Golden State's going to win the series. The question is going to be how much resistance is Houston going to offer them. That's really what it comes down to for me. Bottom line is this. Golden State's a better offensive team. Golden State is a significantly better defensive team. Yeah. Houston can turn it up at times defensively, but they're not consistent across the board. And at the critical positions that you need to, need to going to be good defensively in this series, they don't have that without Patrick Beverly. That's an enormous loss to play a team like this because you got... Jason Terry and Pablo Prigioni trying to chase Steph Curry around. James Harden is going to have to be chased. Basket. Sean Livingston could come off the bench. He causes you matchup problems. And again, the absence of Patrick Beverly, as Tim just elocuted, is devastating because he is there specifically to defend. Yeah. He ain't an offensive player. He's there to defend. And when you have Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, you got a problem because whoever's on James Harden, whoever James Harden is on, they're going to make him run. They're going to make him run. That's how they're going to try to offset what he gives them offensively because when he's on defense, they're going to make him have a lot of momentum based on what they just did to the Clippers. That, that does mean something heading into this series. So I will say Houston, because of that, they're playing good enough basketball right now, believe in themselves. They'll get two games, but Golden State wins it in six. I picked the Golden State Warriors in six as well. Um, I look at the I look at the Warriors. They move the basketball very well. They trust one another, and Klay Thompson and Steph Curry aren't their only shooters. Draymond Green can hit some shots. Andre Iguodala will hit some shots, but he'll score on the break for you. Harrison Barnes can hit some shots. He can score getting to the a series with the stuff that he does and maybe get into his head a little bit, make him try to do too much. That's what Patrick Beverly does to guys. Without him, it's really difficult to think. They're on the ball perimeter defense. It's going to be a problem. you got to chase guys around a lot of screens when you play the Golden State Warriors and commit for, for the entire shot clock. I don't know that Houston really has that level. They'll score, but they're not going to score enough because they're not going to stop Golden State the level they have to. So you're going Golden State in? I'm going to be nice and say six. Oh. If I wanted to really be out there on the edge, I'd say sweep because I think Golden State's a significantly better team. But listen, Houston does have some Clay Thompson around. We know James is not necessarily the guy that's going right. to dig in on that end. So that's the biggest problem is, is can Houston stop Golden State or make them less efficient at least to give yourself a chance to win? I think Houston can score in this series. I don't know that they're going to be able to stop Golden State for long stretches, and that's what it comes down to. Golden and State's better on both ends. Just for our viewers, uh, Beverly, wrist injury, not expected to play Correct. for the rest of the season. So yeah. that's why you really think that's a super negative. That's an enormous loss. You're talking one of the best on-the-ball defensive guards in the league. He's the, And also the kind of guy that's an irritant. He would wear on Curry a little bit over the course of